call up Kristen Lopez, who, as I mentioned, is our Director of Education and Training, so that we can begin our program on how all these great events can be amplified through social media. Thanks, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Director of Education and Training here at Connecticut Main Street Center, and I am super excited to be talking about this topic today. So as part of our mission, we go around the state talking to all sorts of main streets, and the challenge that always comes up is, how do I market my main street? How do I get people to come here to spend more money, to stay here, boost foot traffic? Or maybe we have all these awesome things that are happening, and everyone's still saying there's nothing to do downtown. And inevitably, social media comes up as a strategy that you could use. Um, we all know how important and powerful a tool it is, but you know, let's be honest, if we look who's in the room right now, don't choose. Um, so, if we look in the room right now, 39% of you are, are, are municipal economic developers. We have some consultants, business owners, chambers of commerce. I mean, let's face it, you guys aren't great at social media. I have to say that in the most loving and endearing way possible. There might be some you know, unicorns in the room. But, you know, let's face it, you have a lot of things to do. You know, social media, you know it's a tool, you know you should be on there, but you don't have the time because you're busy doing other which is totally fine. And what happens is, uh, you know, you work super hard of doing some type of social media, and you get very little engagement, and it's really depressing, and, and we're doing this great praise, and, and no one's coming, you know? Um, and on top of all of that, of being discouraged and, you know, having to do this, but not really knowing what to do, the world of social media has rapidly evolved. Um, and just like a super brief, quick look at the last like 10 years, we had Instagram come on the scene in 2010, all focused on pictures. Um, in 2011, they brought in hashtags, which is how we can help you know discover content, find community. In 2014, Snapchat came on, um, which is focused on short, uh, you know, time-based videos and had fun filters. In 2016, Instagram released uh, Instagram Stories, which is all about kind of informally documenting your day. 2017, Facebook makes the pivot to focus on Facebook groups. Um, and so, for you guys in government, this is where your residents are complaining all the time. Um, that's 2017, that's when that really boosted. What happened? Okay, 2018 is TikTok. Oh, you got things. TikTok um, uh, came on, this became a fast favorite of Gen Z. Uh, these are the TikTok dances, and between 2018 and 2021, it exploded in growth. Uh, one report had 67%, it, it exploded. And then in 2020, uh, Instagram came out with Reels to kind of compete with TikTok short form video. And then in 2021, we have YouTube Shorts. And so basically, in just a short span of time, you have 2010 focused on photos to 2021 focused on short form video content. And as all that was happening, influencer marketing has grown exponentially. In fact, one in four Gen Zers dream of becoming an influencer celebrity. So influencer marketing has fundamentally changed 
the way that people buy things and discover new things. Companies are hugely investing in money here to, to get their products, experiences in front of people. We see this in every single industry. Hospitality, travel, food and beverage, beauty, on and on. And you know what is it? We're going to get into that today. But essentially, it's it's really the oldest form of marketing, word of mouth, but on steroids. <coughs> you know, these digital creators, these influencers, are able to create um, followers, a platform of follower, followers, sometimes thousands, sometimes the millions. And these followers like, know, and trust them. And so, when this influencer promotes a product or an experience. Their followers see that as an endorsement and they also want to try it out and experience it. So we see this as an incredible opportunity for our main streets to take advantage of, to tap into this world of digital creators and influencers and use this to position their main street. And that's what we're here to explore today. We want to empower you as main street managers to work alongside these digital creators and influencers to better highlight and market your main street and your unique identity. Our goal is for you to walk away with an idea of what it's like to work with an influencer, how to plug into Connecticut's marketing, and how you can leverage the creative entrepreneurs in your community like Westville is doing. We can't get into every single nuance and detail, but I really encourage you to talk to our great exhibitors today who are a wealth of knowledge and insight and can help you move along with the campaign I picked past. So with that, let's dive into our first panel discussion, Unlocking Digital Creation for Your Main Street. Panelists, will you come join me? Up here, let's give them a round of applause. Welcome, welcome. It is, you may have to sit on the front end here. Hello, good morning, thank you so much for being here. So, just to start off, we're going to dive in with you guys introducing yourself. Laura, I'm going to have you go, and then if Lauren Bev can go and talk a little bit about Unlocking Connecticut as well. Great. Hi, my name is Laura Budd. I'm the Executive Director of the New Canaan Chamber of Commerce. I also serve on our municipality's TDAC, which is Tourism and Economic Development Committee. And I'm also very honored to represent New Canaan uh, on the Western Connecticut Tourism Bureau. We get to share. <laughs> Hi, we are on Walking Connecticut. I'm Laura Karam. I'm Beth Canapari. And we started our blog when we met like 10 years ago. Because Bev was teaching Jazzercise. <laughs> and we became friends. We became friends. Um, and then I gently stopped Laura and I saw that she was. Um, photographing New York Fashion Week, which I always wanted to go to. So I asked her if she needed an assistant, and I did. <laughs> so I went along, we became friends. Um, quickly, we decided um, we wanted to start our own blog. Um, we were followers of other blogs. We saw that in our area, we were up in Litchfield County at the time, that there wasn't much of that going on, telling us what to discover up there. So we started unlocking Litchfield, and that was going really well, and we were getting requests from Fairfield County. So two years after we launched Unlocking Litchfield, we said, let's launch Unlocking Fairfield. So that meant two websites, two social media accounts, two newsletters, blah, 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 along with our full-time jobs that we have in addition to the blog. So we ran that for two more years, and then requests were coming from all over the state, New Haven, you know, Madison. So we're like, let's just make it simple and launch Unlocking Connecticut. And that's where we are today, eight years later. I love that. Thank you so much. And see, that's serendipity right there. A little stalking and asking. You never know what can happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gentle. Sorry. Read like that. Um, when we were prepping this, call or this panel, I had called you as influencers. And you're like, no, we see ourselves more digital creators. I'm wondering if you could just unpack that a little bit more in your own words. What does it mean to be digital creators and creating digitally? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we begin? Um, well, we have a website. So we create features for our website that stays there forever. Um, and then a lot of our focus is Instagram and uh, Facebook. 
Um, I do all the photography, and Bev does the writing, so it's a great marriage of our talents together. But we also do other things to promote businesses. So we have a budget for anyone. So small business, large business, a newsletter, um, social media only, lots of different things. We try to keep it fun and light um, while presenting the message of what each business has to offer. And can you speak to a little bit about the social media content that you post and what are you seeing that people are really engaging with? And when I say engaging, can you explain to the audience what that means in social media terms? Yeah, so it's kind of moved away from how many likes you get. It's more about impressions, um, people who visit or you know, scroll through your page and see it. Um, we also you know, care about bookmarks and sharing. That really helps boost the post. If people are you know, seeing something that they want to look at later, they bookmark it, and that really helps. I think one thing that we wanted to share about social media is, you know, you hear all these Instagrams like, do the reels, that's what's hot right now, but we just looked at our, you know, our stats and algorithms, and reels are not popular for us as much as static photos on our post. So you kind of have to do what works for you and listen to your own audience, not just what Instagram is telling you to do. So we try to mix it up and test things out, but ultimately you have to do what works for your readers. And they do tend to engage more when we're in the post. They, they trust us. They kind of see us as their friends. They are our friends. Um, so they want to see us having the experience real, real time, you know, genuine. So that for sure is more engaging to people than just a static, you know, post. Yeah, it really comes down to you become your, your personalities essentially, and your followers really see who you are, your personalities, and see a likeness. Oh, if Laura Bev like it, then I probably will like it too. Can you also just briefly talk about like who your followers are? A little bit of your staff. Uh, mainly it's women 45 to 55 um, we actually our second city of readership is New York City believe it or not because there's so many weekenders that come up that they come to us looking for ideas of where to go and what to do Laura I'm gonna turn over to you real quick and so how and why did New Canaan decide to engage with a in Connecticut, what were you trying to do? So, part of the, the mission of this Tourism and Economic Development Committee, which was really only founded in uh, a new first selectman took over in 2017, he was very focused on marketing, redid the town's website, set up this committee that really kicked off late 2018. And it's filled with residents and non-residents who uh, either are part of our cultural scene or they have marketing expertise. And so we are constantly looking at things that we can support to promote the town, to put the town in a good light, showcase all of our assets. So Ben and Laura spoke at a state marketing conference, I don't know, last, yeah, it, it last November. And uh, my former boss, who's now the chief administrative officer, came down. She goes, there are these great women. We get them, get them, get them, get them. So we have to have them. I don't know what we're going to do with them, but we have to have them. So uh, we exchanged emails and spoke, and then they presented to the committee. And I had seen, so I, I, I spent a lot of time looking at their website, looking at their Instagram, looking at how they interact with their uh, audience and I found them to be genuine and real and fun and so I invited them to come speak in front of our TDEC and then um, because we have this committee we were able to recommend to the Board of Selectmen to invest in doing a uh, road trip New Canaan. Uh, we have several assets, we have the Philip Johnson Glass House, we have Grace Farms, a nature center, a historical society, a brand new library, so we put together a really fun day um, and it, it, it dovetailed off a campaign we were working on in TDAC. We put together a print brochure of all of our cultural institutions. So this was just an extra digital boost uh, to, to make that happen. But I, I have to say, what made it work was this committee who's focused on marketing. It's so hard 
for municipal governments, as you said, they're not usually focused on how can we market, especially you know bringing uh, someone else to represent. So uh, I think we were the conduit to make it happen. I think that's a really interesting point, Laura, around getting a buy-in from from the municipal government to to <coughs> loosen up the the budget or. I'm just curious for any of the members in the audience who are in a position, but maybe they don't have such a, um, I, I don't know what the word is, maybe open, open-minded open to, you know, doing an engagement like this. Do, do, do you have any advice for them? I think that people have to be consumers of the media. And I, I think the way you have to start is you know, search Instagram or Twitter or, or LinkedIn on Connecticut or uh, TikTok has a lot of Connecticut people reviewing the best hamburger in the state or whatever. And, and I think people <coughs> shouldn't be afraid of it. And you have to encourage people, spend six months to become a consumer and, and really look at it and, and work hard to, to develop your online relationship with, you know, the different influencers who are around. Uh, it's not as scary as it sounds, and it's, I think, for municipality, especially, to hand over the reins even a little bit. Now, uh, Bev and Laura were promoting some of our institutions around town, but still, they were, it, they're ultimately representing uh, the community as well. And so I think it's just a really a question of building up trust, and the way to do that is to engage and follow and, and really um, learn. Yeah, thank you. And I should just mention, we will have time for questions, so if you have any in mind, um, just keep them in your head and we'll get to them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the coffee, I'm just going off of the vent, you know, the journal this morning. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the campaign that you did with your campaign. Can you break down exactly, like, what, what did that consist of? So a lot of what we do is day trip features. We like to find downtowns that you can park and walk around or you know, further afield also. Um, so our day trip was Laura coming up with our itinerary for the day. Quite often we will make that ourselves, but this was just an awesome thing that happened for us. Um, so she set up her itinerary. She actually drove us around. We did a little um, one, did we do one picture? Three pictures for each place on the website feature um, with a little paragraph. So we're just kind of like piquing the interest of anyone who's, who's looking. Um, and then to promote that feature on our website, we do our social media promotion. Um, so we were featuring, you know, we were promoting the feature as a whole. And then each spot got their own reel. Um, so it just kind of kept going. Laura was so great, thank you, that before we went into every business, she would give us a little side story about this is the owner, or not the owner, but like this is what this uh, location's about and what they do and their mission, and it was so great to have that backstory um, before we went in, so she was so great at putting everything together. And this was done in May, right in this year? So um, what has the reaction been? What have you seen? So I haven't updated on the metrics, and it really wasn't about metrics. I mean, the numbers were great, uh, the impressions that came from the campaign. Um, what I thought was interesting was, you know, all the sites. So when we would get to a site, I had scheduled for the executive director or the communications manager to be there uh, to tour them around, except the Nature Center, just the chickens let us around. <laughs> we, we, we had to kind of wing it at the Nature Center. Um, but, uh, the feedback was really positive. Everyone enjoyed the interaction, and you know, of course, when they all when they put up the Instagram post, they tagged everybody, and I think uh, all the sites uh, saw a little bump in traffic and uh, really enjoyed the buzz. And then I took the feature and put it. I have an email newsletter through the Chamber of Commerce that goes to 6,400 businesses and residents, and I made it one of uh, the posts there. And what I, was interesting to me was how much traction that got within my email. Um, and I was like, oh, I didn't even think about the residents. You know, the, uh, the residents know about the theater and the art center, but 
I think they've never seen them all packaged together. You know, this is our town, look at all these terrific assets we have here. And I think that was interesting to me, was, was how much engagement came from that. <laughs> um, I was just going to say that when we do a feature and we promote it, we get a lot of messages and DMs from people that say things like, you know, we come to your social media account when it's my turn to plan date night, or I want to plan a weekend with my best friend. Like, what do we do? And they come to us, and that's why they bookmark things. And so our bookmarks for this post was out of control, because people were like, that's a cute tone, I want to go visit it. Maybe not this month, but maybe next month. So it's important for us to see that too, the bookmarks and shares as well. <laughs> uh, legs. I mean, I, I really feel just what you were saying with the bookmark. It's you know you're not looking for instant hysteria. Um, what you're looking for is engagement and people really thinking and you know making them aware. And a, a campaign like this, which lives on their website, uh, is is going to get uh, have a lot of legs. And you know someone may come visit next year or whatever. And that's great. That's that's really what it's all about. It's true, and our day tripping posts and our holiday gift guide, those are our most popular posts, and they're consecutively, all year long, they're getting hits from day trips from two years ago, so. I think that one of the things that marketing has always struggled with, um, like as a discipline, is that it's hard to measure. You know, digitally, yes, we can, we can measure how many clicks, how many views, things like that. But ultimately, in a business, for example, right, it's you want to put out marketing dollars to then sell sell the widget. And what we're talking about here is, you know, visits. It's 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 much more kind of like a long tail play. We want to see people, you know, booking restaurant reservations or going to that boutique or staying the night, you know, etc. And you you've already kind of talked about it, but I'd like to talk about it a little bit more strategically in the sense of how. How, like, or how have you seen how you can like leverage, you know, this investment in creating a campaign to live on longer, and also for you as the digital creator, what do you see like over time, or even like um, qualitative responses that you get um, from from people engaging with your content? It's it's like you're 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 renting space in your followers' brain right, to come back, and I, I, I would just, I'd be curious to hear a little bit more about those metrics that you look at um, to see how it's, it's sticking in people's brain a little bit. I mean, I think that we're finding, like Laura said, it's not an instant thing. It's, I mean, I think everyone probably scrolls and doesn't necessarily like or interact with everything, but it goes in, so it's an impression. Um, I think just don't get disheartened if, if you don't get that instant buzz um, because it's still out there. Your Instagram is kind of like a portfolio for your business or downtown. So just you know, keep, good, keep good content, be consistent, variety. We get really excited when we get a message from a business right after we post. And for instance, one wrote to us and said, oh my god, the first five customers today said they saw your feature on us. And I think it's important to remember that not only are those five people you know, buying from that business because of our post, but they're telling their friends so, who may not be on Instagram. And so word spreads not just through social media, but it is definitely a great medium for it. I'm old enough to remember the uh, Clairol Herbal Essence shampoo commercial. <laughs> if, if you tell a friend, right? And they'll tell a friend. I can see it's Gen X and Boomers in here for that. And they'll tell a friend. And, and, and that's, that's how we like to build things, uh, slowly and surely. Because I, I think trends in marketing are changing. It used to be, well, if a celebrity endorsed a product, ooh, everyone will get it. And that's Still true, I think my daughter has all the Kylie Jenner makeup, whatever, but, but I think people are looking for authentic interactions and nothing is better than, I mean, uh, you, you sit down to dinner with friends, what are you watching, right? Uh, you know, oh, did you like that restaurant? And people really wanna take authentic recommendations from people that they trust. 
and obviously those are our friends, and then our trusted uh, media per you know, personalities. And I think that's what makes the difference, and I think that's a, a real shift in, in marketing all in general. Much more organic. Yeah. And it's, it's really just what we already do naturally as humans, putting it on a digital platform, and instead of you talking to one person, hey, do you check out that place, it's now, you know, thousands. So what advice do you have uh, from both of you for folks who are interested um, in doing this type of relationship? You know, a, a municipality or a main street group or a chamber, et cetera, wanting to partner with an influencer. On both ends, what do you need to be successful? What do you need to do for them to be successful? Like, what are some of those key things that need to be in place? Trust, right? So if, if you're going to engage with influence or content marketers, really spend time going all the way back through a lot of their posts, see what they're all about, um, and, and if you think it works, if you think it matches with your target audience, open up a relationship with them, um, see how the vibe is, um, and then you gotta let them do their thing. Right, because they know their audience, they know their readers, watchers, listeners, and you have to you have to trust them, and they're going to see things that you might necessarily might not have picked up about your community. It's a fresh set of eyes that's coming in, so trust is the number one thing. Can we say ditto. <laughs> I think what Laura says, right? You have to find influencers that kind of are on your same wavelength, or you like their energy, and just. Send a message, DM, email, respond to emails. That's a big thing. <laughs> um, what else? Just trust in the content. You know, that you know what the influencer or marketers their work is like. So let them do their thing because they know their thing. <laughs> Deep words. <laughs> And I do also want to underscore that you did provide some guidance for them, right? You, you created the, the, um, the roadmap um, and these little tidbits. Um, when you were creating that, that day itinerary, was there any kind of strategy or thought in mind? Um, I wanted to make sure that the right people were there because I could give a top line overview, you know, kind of the bullet, as they say but I really wanted them to engage with the people on site who were passionate. Um, so I reached out to everybody and said we were coming and this was our time frame and what time would work best. And then I sort of geographically uh, set, it, set it all up so it was an, you know, an, an easy day. What did we visit, eight places? Seven or eight, oh no we had lunch too. Yeah of course lunch, gotta have lunch. <laughs> that was the highlight of the day. I'm already thinking about what's next. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I think just uh, making it an easy day so they could focus. I wanted them to focus on you know learning about the place and, and feeling what it was all about, and not have to worry about getting from one place to the next because we did a lot in a day. And we had a really detailed time frame at each place. I think it was like a half an hour typed. Um, but you know, we were like, do you want us to shoot this or that? And I was like, just do your thing, like. Like she said before, we have fresh eyes, so we get excited about things that maybe a business owner or you know executive director doesn't see so much because they see things every day where we get very excitable, and so those are the things that we shoot and focus on. I think just to underscore around the fresh eye perspective, and I, and I, I say this in a joking, lovingly way, but uh, you know when I see a lot of Main Street social media. You know, it's typically like that one image that you made off of Canva, and then it's like posted over and over and over again. And because you're so close to the thing that you're doing, you're like, I don't know what else to say about this thing. <laughs> like, come show, there's food, you know, music, have fun. Um, and I think that's the really key around having the fresh eyes, the fresh perspectives of, Highlighting something that is you're completely missing, um, and that's no fault of your own. It's just you're busy. You're doing a, a lot of things, and so I think that's just one kind of nugget that I would really hope to leave you with is to build up those partners that you trust, 
so that you can hear the perspective on, on what you're doing or, or what your ministry has to offer. Um, and also, I want to underscore around trust, and you kind of have mentioned it. There are a lot of types of influencers out there. And um, more men, 45 to 55 women, um, I'm sure there's more psychographics that you could describe there. But you know, not all the influencers out there are going to align with what your goals are. And so it is important to do a little research, like Laura said, of going on, see what they're about, what they've been talking about. So, you know, if <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example, like a muscle car enthusiast influencer, you know, may not be the best approach for your like no car downtown, you know, I don't know. But um, those are just things to, to keep in mind. And now, Laura, I know that you're looking uh, for a second round uh, that looks a little bit different. Do you want to explain that a little bit? So on round two, I put my Chamber of Commerce hat on um, and reached out to a lot of my downtown member retail stores and said, you know, I showed the piece they had done around our cultural assets and said, uh, November 4th, uh, Beth and Laura can come back and do another kind of uh, road trip part two, really focusing on our downtown, which aligns with uh, our TDAC goals too for this upcoming fiscal year is focus more on downtown. And within you know uh, 24 hours, I had the eight slots all filled up and a couple on a wait list. So they will come in and do their thing in the stores and then they're working directly with them um, and I'll kind of be there, be around that day, and take them out to lunch, and you know, we'll have another fun day. Um, but I, I think you know they'll do a great job uh, in the stores, uh, which then I'm going to take that and really use it to promote our sort of shop. Think local first for the holidays. Shop local for all your gift buying, and use these eight stores. Uh, as an overlay of the interesting and unique things that you can find when you come and shop in our downtown. That's great. I'll be looking forward to seeing yeah. how that plays out. Um, for for Unlocking Connecticut, why would a Main Street want to hire you? Um, and maybe if they aren't ready yet, you know, maybe they're the, the decision makers on budget just aren't quite there yet, they don't catch the vision. What are some things maybe that they could do um, to, you know, besides hiring you, what are some other things that they could do? Um, we find that towns with um, a mural, a good backdrop is really cool. People like to take their selfies. You should definitely include in there their, the hashtag that you want people to, to quote. Um, you know, those Instagrammable spots make them obvious. Signs on the ground, who knows? Definitely play up what the town has to offer, even if you think your townspeople know about it, people in surrounding towns might not, so don't take advantage of what's right around you. Um, and I think for communication, if it's not in budget right now, we do have packages for almost any budget, like we said earlier, so just Start a conversation with us, let us know what you're looking to market, and we'll see what we can do, come up with a plan, and just start a conversation. I think just that's the main thing, is letting whoever you want to work with know what your mission is and what you want to accomplish, what your budget is, and we'll make it happen. Well, we're very reasonable. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to open up for questions now. Excellent. And I just one thing that I want to add and come right to you. Um, the, the idea of the aesthetics are important to your Main Street to highlight for people to be excited to take pictures and everything. And I also just wanted to share one example that came across in my research is a Main Street community in Mason, um, Georgia. And you know they created this really interesting hype team where they, uh, as volunteers, became essentially digital marketing ambassadors for their Main Street. And it's a whole kind of program that the Main Street says, okay, we have this event coming up, please do a post on this. And um, if you're interested, I can send you the, the information that I found on it. Um, just shoot us an email to one of our teams, I'll send it to you. Um, but you know, just some other ways that you can take advantage of like the assets, which are your residents and people who already love your place, to to spread the word. Okay.
Good morning, ladies. I want to thank Beth, Laura, and Laura for your time. One of the things, this question is for both Beth and Laura. Um, one of the things that you guys have done is really spent years building your credibility, starting with your website to your blog. The question that I have is um, for, I think, those of us who are kind of getting started in this, um, knowing, um, you know, thinking about algorithms, thinking about metrics, how much of what you do is paid sponsorship to help grow your audience? And from your perspective, how should um, municipalities think about using paid sponsorship? Because we all, most of us know organic is dead. For most part, you have to pay to play. So can you talk a little bit about what that looks like and how that's a part of your conversations when you're working with municipalities? Thank you. Thank you for the question. I think 80% or so of our posts are paid sponsorships. We are a business in LLC. Um, I guess, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah. It's paid. <laughs> <laughs> That's helpful. That's just helpful. Yeah. Thank you. We don't really think about like the algorithms and things. It's mainly, especially when we started our brand, it was just being ourselves and doing what we do. And the right people will follow us. They don't, you know, it doesn't have to be everyone. So I think if you all just are being yourselves and showing off what's your asset, um, that's going to be the best thing. The right people will come. <laughs> um, I think your point about paid versus non-paid, it is very frustrating to get anything, even as a Chamber of Commerce, we're a 501c6, to get Facebook to push anything that is not paid these days. In fact, I really stopped using Facebook to promote, promote my events. Um, with the exception of the moms group, uh, which is the most powerful weapon uh, in, in the community. The sword cuts both ways, big time. But, um, you know, my marketing plan is, you know, we have a Halloween block party on Sunday. Hopefully it's not going to rain. Um, you put it on the moms page. You put it in the email. You put it in the social media. But when I look over my Instagram, if I've got, and you guys said it before, people respond to pictures and videos with people in it. When I just put up my little pretty graphic, it just it just falls flat, like the one you showed on the screen before. And so people, but you know, I'll put up a picture of a networking event with a bunch of people in it, and you get all sorts of uh, interaction with it. So I, I think that's the key, is not just showing, you know, we all have, the, in Connecticut, we have all these beautiful, t charming towns and main streets, but it's showing people interacting and being active that I think really gets the engagement. It's true, we get, um, one of our marketing options is we'll promote an event for you. We prefer to go and make our own graphic for it because people will send us graphics and we're like, that's gonna get 10 likes. Like, no one likes to look at an ad and I was talking to a friend's daughter who's freshman in college and she said, my age group, if it looks like an ad, we're just scrolling right by. Like They just don't want it. They want real, authentic. So an image is much better. Put your text below or just a one-liner. Keep it simple and clean is the best way to go. Link and buy. Link and buy. <laughs> and link tree is good to use right now. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi ladies, my name is Lauren. I'm with the uh, Town of West Hartford Economic Development Department. Um, thank you all for being here. This has been very helpful for me. Um, one of my missions that I just started with the town five weeks ago, um, I was a former business owner, entrepreneur, I had a prepared foods to go catering operation, just recently sold it, took the summer off. And uh, here I am, you know, thrown into this role. And one of the concerns is we really need to promote social media, and no one's really been doing it. It's very flat, no, you know, no traffic, no, I think the last post was last year. I mean, it's, it's yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I'm charged with it, and I'm not an uh, Instagram girl. I do Facebook, but um, one of my concerns is if we're going to focus, and I know today we're focusing about Main Street, we have five different districts in West Hartford. So, um, what I was told was, well, you can't really focus on all the restaurants in West Harvard Center because everybody does and everybody talks about that, or the retail shops on 
you know, on Main Street, they they just they get more play than the industrial district or one of the other um, the design districts. So we, I don't know how I'm going to balance this out, or do I do a, you know a, a tour of each district, or how do you how do you prevent people from getting angry or that backlash <laughs> that you didn't really you know well you didn't like they're the other stepchild. You know what I'm saying? So, and and how do you how do you pay attention to that? I think um, reach out to those content creators and let them have their creative minds already chugging, because I'm already feeling a couple of posts coming on for you. <laughs> um, hidden gems are, you know, be, like do a, a few posts with somebody. Um, you know, let them do their creative magic. Just give them the mission and the idea and see what they come up with and then back and forth. I think a lot of it has to do with how often that account is posting. So the more that you post, maybe three, four times a week, it sounds like a lot, but it's not. That's more businesses you're gonna get to promote, so they can't be like, well, you're not promoting me. But the hidden gems thing is good, you know, spread it out, do different types of posts. I was just gonna say, welcome to Chamber of Commerce <laughs> Economic <laughs> Development. And it, it, you're always going to get the complainers. Oh, why didn't you do? You know, we had a video crew come to downtown New Canaan, and we did. We said, do your own thing. We we kind of gave them an overarching, and you know, uh, it was like a it was a promotion that we did at the Board of Realtors for the whole town, and they happened to pick the restaurant to go in and shoot because it was busier than another one, and we got hauled in and yelled at for 20 minutes by another restaurant owner, you know, and he didn't want to hear that. We just told them to go where they felt the energy was. You know, we were on a really tight schedule. So you, I guess my thing is you're never going to make everybody happy. Um, and I think what Ben and Laura said is right. And, you know, maybe you donate uh, or, or designate a day of the week for each particular section uh, of, of town. and. You reach out to them. What I do is just reach out to everybody. It's just like when I'm hiring them to come back to do the downtown segment for holiday shopping. I reached out to a lot of people. I emailed them, and the ones that got back got the opportunity. So build up as big a list as possible. Give everyone the opportunity, because then you can say, I offered. You know, and you'll say, send me content. Um, and just spread as wide a that net as possible. And, and that that will help. And and the ones that want to engage, engage. Um, but it is it's it, it's a tough. I, I always say I serve many masters. So. So, you know, it's you have to fish where the fish are, 
And I think that you just have to show people, you know, where where your residents are, where your potential customers are, um, and bringing younger people to the table uh, it is also the way to do it. You know, we're we're all digital immigrants, um, but you know they're digital natives, uh, and and that really uh, you know they'll speak with with some authority too. But getting younger people mixed up in in that board was it more of the persistence? Or do you think it was just being the loudest one in the room saying, this is what's smart? No, no I think because we had that, our TDAC commission, yeah. and it's filled, you know, we have a woman that runs a national public relations firm, another that runs a local marketing firm. And so when we go to the board of selectmen, we say, hey, we think this is a good idea. It's fitting under our theme. They trusted our voice coming together. So having, having a diverse group, uh, and I mean diversity in all different ways, sitting at the table coming up with the ideas um, is, is very important. Thank you very much uh, for, for sharing your insight and your wisdom and, and how you guys uh, came came together. It's really exciting to see kind of how the second round does. And with that, please give a round of applause to our first panel.